Welcome, Nerida. Thank you for joining us today in order to talk about your career in paediatric anesthesia. Princess Margaret Hospital has had an anesthesia service since the hospital opened in June 1909. Has much of the history been recorded? The information we've got about the anesthetic service is derived from the theatre books and we have got all those, mm. including the very first one. We were lucky that the nurse who recorded the information, recorded mm. the surgeon, the anaesthetist, the operation, and the anaesthetic, and anything interesting mm. which happened mm. during or afterwards. One of the developments in the 1960s, and one that you were particularly interested in, was uh, anaesthesia induction rooms. Can you comment on those? They were not by any means universal at that stage for adults and I'd certainly seen how frightened children were when they were put in a operating theatre and anaesthetised and the only way to create an induction room was to use a little corridor which was a sort of combined corridor cupboard but we managed to rig it up and use it as an induction room in that theatre. One of the other developments around that time was the recovery rooms were you involved in the development of recovery rooms? Uh, there was a small room attached to the theatre which was being used as a, a, a syringe bank and we managed to acquire that quite soon. It could add, take two trolleys at a pinch, and well, three at a pinch, and one nurse, and that was a, the, the, that was a crowd. But it did work. It was quite a frightening situation when, when there were in that early, those early days, thinking of people in the dark in a ward, recovering from a, an anaesthetic. It must have produced quite a change in practice and uh, quite an improvement in inpatient care. Oh yes, and of course it was possible then for the parents to come to the, to the uh, uh, recovery room and uh, mm. before the child was fully conscious and be there when the child woke up so that uh, the whole mm. thing was much more satisfactory. Mm. That's something we tend to forget a bit about nowadays but in, in the, the 50s uh, parents were almost excluded from paediatric hospitals. They certainly were. The visiting hours were stated clearly at, on a board at the entrance and that was twice a week. In 1953 Bob Godfrey became the medical director and he introduced daily visiting which was a revolution and of course parents are, are now allowed into the anaesthetic induction rooms they that we weren't sure about that at the start we thought that the parents would be possibly more upset than the children and it was often true but when I came to think of it most of those parents and grandparents had had open ether anaesthetics as children and were frightened of, of anaesthetics so, mm. and uh, it wasn't surprising that they were frightened for the child and, mm. and didn't know that the whole thing was could be much more pleasant. One of your particular interest, interests has always been anaesthesia for, uh, for the airway which is integral to, to paediatrics and thoracic anaesthesia and uh, I've heard stories of you anaesthetising for the croaky throat or a throat that had a plastic frog in it and others. Um, can you comment on the procedures used for airway surgery? They're challenging at any age but particularly in uh, newborns and uh, small infants. It really was adult equipment in those days which was very difficult in those very small babies with very pliant structures and of course Things like bronchoscopes were not 
at all designed with children in mind, nor with anaesthesia in mind, really. One of the pioneering things that was done was pain relief for children. Can you comment on the introduction of that? Children got very poor pain relief on the whole. It was said that they tolerated it badly um, and that they didn't feel it the same as, uh, as adults did. There were a lot of myths around pain relief. Some of us had visited Newcastle on Tyne where one of the anaesthetist was using infusions, so we decided to see if we could in introduce those against all the rules. And initially we started off with a dilute infusion in the conventional way and then moved on to syringe pumps, more concentrated infusion. But um, it went well. Um, they, we made the most detailed protocols um, that you could imagine and it was accepted and changed, I think, the way they thought about pain relief because once they'd seen children who were not in pain after operations um, and admitted that, that uh, children who were screaming probably were in pain, <laughs> that, uh, that uh, they accepted that they had to. Interesting. In them. Just listening to your comments, it's clear that these battles in hospitals tend to go in cycles and you were a, a very consummate uh, committee chairman. What advice would you give to uh, newer heads of department on how to, to meet these challenges? Well, I was, when I started at PMH, I wasn't a, a, an administrator in any sense of the word. I didn't quite know how to handle the early problems. I think you've got to get out out of the department and go to as many clinical meetings and social function and so on in the hospital as possible so that you can put forward all your requests and desires and so on. And I think you've got, in a children's hospital, you've got to just learn as much paediatrics as you can too. Uh, there's nothing gives, used to give me greater joy than to recognise a, a syndrome before the paediatricians had. Because <laughs> they love syndromes. They do, yeah. <laughs> what has driven you in your work? Well, I, I like keeping up a standard of paediatric anaesthesia and I, I like the people. Uh, I like the atmosphere of the hospital. Yeah. Uh, that's about... It, it was a satisfying job. And, and what are you most proud of for, in your achievements at PMH? I was proud of the f fact that uh, our registrars seemed to enjoy their time at PMH so much uh, that many of them wanted to come back and uh, work at PMH later in their careers. That gave me a great deal of satisfaction. It seemed that with all, <coughs> all the problems that the department must have been doing something right in the, uh, in the training side of things. Of course, as far as uh, other sources of pride, I suppose uh, it was uh, it was having such a loyal department, it was having such loyal technicians, and it was having cre created for other people to develop uh, the um, intensive care side of the, of the specialty. It wasn't the only, only the people who came back that enjoyed it in order. I think everybody that was trained there enjoyed it, and that's one of the reasons they wanted to name the what's now the narrow to deal with prize after you because of the teaching and, uh, and the reception that they got in the department. Thank you, Nerida, for joining us today and giving us these insights into your career and your achievements, which have all been for the benefit of children in WA. Thank you, Wally. It's been a, a pleasure.